our human body operating system 1.0 was invented millions of years ago. This operating system, this, this, the mechanism that we utilize and store food as fat, okay, was, was, is not something new. It's something ancient. And the problem in modern society is the overabundance of nourishment, if, if you want to call it that. Overnourishment just means just eating too much. The overabundance of and the, and the providing of and the marketing of junk food, fast food, cakes, cookies, all bullshit snacks, sodas, alcohol, sugar-based products. These things didn't exist. People don't need them. So human body operating system 1.0 doesn't know what to do with all that shit. So if you, if I took my kids to Disney this past August, strongly don't recommend entering the state of Florida, specifically Orlando, Florida in August, unless you want to know what it's like to live on Mercury, avoid that place. With that said, the first thing you do when you go to Epcot, the park at Disney Epcot is you go on the ride Spaceship Earth. Most people do that because it's the first ride at the opening gate. The first thing you see there, and you know what what, what that ride is and what that ride represents is kind of a, a tour of early man through modern man and kind of the advancements of people, you know, throughout history. And the opening scene when you get up the first hill is a bunch of cavemen prehistoric man, I'm not really sure what the exact era is, taking down or trying to take down a woolly mammoth. It's snowing. They're wearing fur. They have spears. And they're trying to, to kill this animal. And you, my assumption is that they're trying to kill it to eat and to get materials, fur, you know, stuff like that. When early man had to eat, early man had to kill something on the spot, eat that thing, and then didn't eat again until the next time they killed something and ate the thing again. So what would happen is you would, you would, they would consume and consume what they could on the spot because there was no refrigerators. There was no seasoning. There was no saran wrap, nothing. You got what you got at the moment. And took all the food in, the calories that were extra, the uh, the abundance was then stored as fat on your body for later use, probably for the next hunt, probably to continue to render out the rest of the animal and and to continue to build shelter and to do, you know, foraging and and whatever else. It's like these things are ancient, but your body was invented. The system in your body was invented at the time that that's what humans did. There's no way to circumvent this. There's no drug, Ozempic. There's no fat melting pill. It's just, it's just a very simple operating system. It's a very simple process. You take in the food, you nourish your body, the extra gets stored, and you move on to the next thing. The problem in, in America, the problem right now is no one's doing that. No one's moving around. No one's certainly moving around to to be really, really hungry enough to go out and justify killing another animal to eat. Okay. No one's doing that. People are stuffing in chemical bombs and concoctions of foods that never existed before in history. And they're taking them in one after another, after another, after another. The fake ass seed oils, the over frying of nasty meat wrapped in sugar and fake ass grains. And, and then you, you, your body takes this in and it's like, whoa, dude, I'm looking for single ingredient things. I'm looking for the meat of an animal, the flesh of a fucking fish, some, some very limited fruits or vegetables or leaves or nuts that were found naturally, okay? It wasn't what the hell we're eating now. It's So if the concept of obesity and the concept of getting fat and gaining weight doesn't make sense to you, maybe after hearing this, it will. 
your body is like a shitty refrigerator. Okay. And in order to access the contents of the refrigerator, you can't have anything in the way. So I equate it to when I was like 20 something and I moved in with a bunch of dirty dudes and everyone's that's not everyone, but a lot of people have lived, you know, as a young person with a bunch of young people that just don't give a shit about cleaning out a refrigerator. So what I would do and what we would do is we would, we would go to the store and buy food and the existing disgusting food that was already old and that was already in there would then just get pushed to the back. And we would add more food to the refrigerator, eat the shit in the front of it, and then push the rest to the back. Never getting to the shit in the back. Your body's the exact same way as that old shitty refrigerator, okay? That living with with a bunch of dirty dudes that never cleaned out a refrigerator. That's what your body's doing. Your body's only utilizing the food that you put in the front. So if you have accumulated a bunch of milk and, and Chinese food, and other shit that gets pushed to the back and it's just back there and it's, it's, you can't even see it anymore. There's so much other food in front of it. All you're going to get to use is the stuff in the front, the fresh milk, the fresh cold cuts, the fresh, whatever. And listen, if you don't ever stop adding new food in, you you can never get to the back of the refrigerator. You can never get, and I'm, I'm equating the fat on your body to the, to the stuff that's in the back of the refrigerator. Okay. And the system doesn't allow for that. So the system says whatever comes in gets used first. The rest of it's stored for later. Later never comes anymore for most people. Okay. No one knows what it's like to be hungry. And I say no one, I don't mean globally. I mean like in normal life where we exist, where people say, oh, I'm starving. And it's been three hours since they ate like you know, a donut and a cup of coffee and some fruit. No one's fucking starving at all. You want to be starving? Go out in the woods, chase an animal down, kill it, cook it, eat it, and then don't eat again for three days. Okay. At the end of that three days, you're starving. Let's be honest here. You know, the way that I achieve starvation. Oh, so getting back to the whole first, before I equate that, the, the refrigerator thing and noting that when you stop adding the new food, you can finally get to the stuff in the back. Okay. And it's been sitting there for a while. Okay. It's, but you can't get to it. You can't get to the food in the back unless you stop adding food to the front. The same thing goes for the fat on your body. Give your body a second to get to the fat as fuel by not making it process new food all the fucking time. That's it. It's that simple. You're taking in way too much food for your body to process and handle. You're sending your body into digestion mode over and over and over again. And it can't get to anything. It can't do the processes that it needed to do naturally based on this shitty operating system that's been installed a fucking million years ago. Okay. So think about the old refrigerator and think about the food coming in the front and all the stuff in the back that you can't get to. Think about the fat is the food in the back. The food that you're adding in right now into your mouth is the food in the front. And you're always going to access the food in the front. Okay. And that's the same thing with your body. If you, if you allow yourself to process that, it'll go away. The fat just goes away because you use it as energy. Can't use the energy. If you're, if you're supplying the body with more new energy all the time. So does that resonate with anyone? I mean, it really, those two things made a lot of sense to me in my mind when I was out in the woods, you know, hiking and trying to get myself to, and this is, I'll continue the story before kind of actually being hungry and actually being quote unquote starving. I find that if I eat at four or four thirty the night before. And people call this intermittent fasting, but really it's just, it's just activating an ancient system that, that needs to be activated, allowing your body to, to utilize everything that's in it and then turn itself on the fat. The fat becomes the food that you can continue to live on. You can live on this food for days, weeks, 
People have so much energy just stuck on their bodies and they're not utilizing it because they never access that system because they don't allow the system to turn on because they continually eat more food. So if I quote unquote intermittent fast and I stop eating at 4, 4.30 p.m. and I don't eat again until 11 a.m. the next day, but between the time that I've eaten and the next meal, I actively exercise, run, walk, hike, lift weights, whatever. Try to utilize that body and that in the in the systems and the muscles, and and turn the fat that's on my body into the fuel I need for that activity. Now, I'm not saying run around the woods and starve yourself out, and you know cause yourself to have some kind of eating disorder. It's not it. You're not going to develop an eating disorder if you're 40 pounds overweight and you don't eat for 18 hours. That's not an eating disorder. That's nature. That's natural. That's what's supposed to happen. Okay. You're not going to wither away and die. I promise you. So give it a shot sometime. Try extending your eating window from the second you go to bed, right before you go to bed, you're plowing down some bullshit. Then you're waking up the next morning thinking you're starving and plowing down some bullshit. Okay. Would you go? 10 hours without food, you're not giving your body enough time to process. So try to eating something really, really good for you and and, and something that's going to fill you up for the evening meal based on mostly protein and fat and mostly protein, high quality. And try, just see what happens if you go 14 hours without food. Okay. And to me, when I first started to hear that information and to acknowledge that, it was unfathomable. 14 hours, fuck off, dude. I wake up starving. I am never going to be able to to live my life and do the things that I have to do if I go 14 hours without food. That's just ludicrous. But guess what? I started doing it and it started to work and I couldn't believe it. Next thing you know, one time I tried. Can I, can I literally go 24 hours without eating food? Yes, I can. Now I got to say that's a little too long for my, even for my comfort level, like 24 hours to me kind of sends me into a wacky place. Now you hear people talk about these long-term fasts and 24 to 72 hour fast. I haven't gotten past 24 hours. And by the time that 24 hours came, uh, um, you know, bugging out for food, but I did it like, I did it like six times now. But on a regular basis, almost every day, I'll go somewhere between 16 and 20 hours. Typically, it's 16 to 18 is my, is kind of like my sweet spot. But I'm trying actively to reduce the amount of calories that I take in in a day. Okay. So that when those, when those fasts are going on, I'm I'm trying to make it so that the food in my system's already been used and that I'm turning the body on the fat storage on my body so that it can utilize it for energy. Clean up some old dead cells, autophagy, which from what I understand doesn't really happen that much in such a short fasting window that the effects of autophagy and you can look that up but I'm not going to dive into that right now. Don't really occur until an extended fast. But I have read and researched. And from what I understand, there is definitely some of that happening when you hit the 16 to 20 hour window on a regular basis. At the very least, what you're doing is you're, you're turning your body into that ancient system, operating system 1.0 and utilizing fat for fuel. Okay. Cause your body thinks it's going into like a different mode. Okay. And you can shut off the consumption you can shut off this this addiction and this need for constant refueling, and you can focus on other things. And it's very strange, once you get used to it, how real that all becomes. So listen, man, I don't know if my story about cavemen and hunting and refrigerators helped anyone in any way, but like I said, when I'm out here in the woods or if I'm you know, running on the road for 13 miles, these are the kind of things that I'm thinking about um, to to help break down and in simple, like easy to understand ways, you know, why you're not losing weight and why you've gained weight. And hopefully 
this shed some light on those things. Okay. So you need more insight, more help, guidance, accountability, training, whatever, reach out. New website, getupearlier.com. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.